Hello and welcome to Sino Insider. I am Kit Young. Today we will talk about Quan Wei, the essential factor in determining political power in China. Xi Jinping is often described as China's most powerful leader since Chairman Mao. She is the head of the Chinese Communist Party, Commander in Chief of the People's Liberation Army, and China's president. She is also named Party Corps Leader, a symbolic but important political title, and has a political theory bearing his name, or Xi Jinping thought on socialism with Chinese characters for a new era. Political office, titles, and theories are important indications of how powerful a Chinese Communist Party leader is. But these aren't the be-all, end-all in Chinese Communist Party elite politics. What really counts in Communist China is Quan Wei. So what is Quan Wei? The Chinese characters for the word offer a clue. The character Quan is taken from Quan Li, or power. The character Wei is drawn from Wei Wang, or prestige. Loosely translated, Quan Wei means power prestige. When we talk about Quan Wei in the context of Chinese Communist Party elite politics, we are referring to the sum total of a leader official's formal and informal authority, power, and prestige. To illustrate the importance of Quan Wei, we'll look at the case of Hua Guofeng and Deng Xiaoping, Hua was Mao's handpicked successor. When Mao died in 1976, Hua became China's paramount leader by virtue of the titles he inherited. These included chairman of the Chinese Communist Party and chairman of a Central Military Commission. Meanwhile, Deng was just a first-ranked vice premier and a vice chairman of the powerful military commission. However, Deng Xiaoping had more Quan Wei than Hua Guofeng and eventually sidelined the latter by 1981. Also, while the highest office Deng ever held was Central Military Commission chairman, he was widely acknowledged as paramount leader, even though there were other higher-ranking offices. Deng Xiaoping allowed him to sack three Chinese Communist Party leaders in the space of ten years. He nearly succeeded in getting rid of a fourth, Jiang Zemin, for refusing to go along with his reform and opening up policy. Deng's ability to pressure Jiang is especially impressive, considering that his only position at the time was honorary chairman of the Chinese Bridge Association. Deng Xiaoping had greater Quan Wei than most Chinese Communist Party officials after Mao's death because he had impressive revolutionary credentials. Deng was a veteran of the Long March and played a leading role in many other revolutionary campaigns, including the Hundred Regiments Offensive. Deng was also a key figure in Mao's government, a very capable official and survivor of multiple political purges. With his credentials and unimpeachable Quan Wei, officials holding high office had to defer to Deng Xiaoping on major matters of the day, including the decision to massacre student protesters in Tiananmen Square in 1989. Revolutionary era cadres like Deng Xiaoping, however, have long passed from the scene. Modern Chinese Communist Party elites no longer have revolutionary credentials to burnish. So, what accounts for Quan Wei in this day and age? There are at least three criteria to gauge the Quan Wei of a Communist Party leader or official. First, members of the red aristocracy or the offspring of revolutionary era cadres naturally have more Quan Wei than those from non-revolutionary backgrounds. Party princelings or Hong Er Dai include. Officials like Xi Jinping and Bo Xilai, the princelings believe that the Red Dynasty is rightfully theirs because it was won by the revolutionary fathers. While officials from non-revolutionary backgrounds do hold top office, such as Hu Jintao and Li Keqiang, they are viewed as mere caretakers or guan jia by the princeling class. They have less Quan Wei and thus have less ability to advance their agendas. For instance, it is often said that when Hu was general secretary, his orders never left the gates of Zhongnan High Party headquarters. Meaning that his policies were rarely faithfully carried out by subordinates. Second, the Quan Wei of Communist Party leaders or officials can be gauged by looking at the visible aspects of their political status. This includes official positions, titles, political theories, political slogans, political phrases, political movements, appearances, and mentions in propaganda, the level of protocol afforded to them, as well as formal and informal elite and military support. A prominent example of this is Bo Xilai, the disgraced Politburo member and party boss of Chongqing, southwestern China. Bo, who was a party princeling, organized a so-called "striking red, hitting black" anti-corruption campaign in Chongqing. This and other actions made him something of a spiritual leader in a neo-Maoist movement in the Communist Party. Bo Xilai was also mentioned frequently in mainland propaganda outlets and was praised by international presses and scholars. Bo Xilai had accumulated so much Quan Wei at one point that he represented a legitimate challenge to the then General Secretary Hu Jintao. Third and finally, Quan Wei can be accumulated through political legacy. Without political achievements, a Communist Party leader looks incompetent and will face challenges from the party elite. The connection between personal accomplishments and Quan Wei explains why Xi claimed in September 
that his Xinjiang policies are completely correct, despite strong international condemnation of the persecution of the Uyghur Muslims there. The need to boost Chen Wei also explains why she essentially rewrote the history of the Chinese Communist Party's handling of the coronavirus outbreak to highlight his early role in stemming the epidemic and reframe ineptitude into accomplishment. Of course, Xi Jinping is taking a huge personal risk in reframing less glorious episodes under his leadership as accomplishments. In the event that Xi's accomplishments are thoroughly debunked or come to threaten regime survival, his Chen Wei will be gravely undermined and his factional rivals have an opening to seek his ouster. In summary, Chen Wei, not office, titles, or political theory, determines how powerful a Chinese Communist Party leader or official really is. In assessing the Chen Wei, leaders like Xi Jinping are far more vulnerable than appearances suggest. That is all for this episode. If you found this informative, please share this video and subscribe to be notified of updates on our channel. To read more on how Chen Wei affects China's elite politics, please visit us at sinoinsider.com. Thank you for watching.